Please bear in mind that this video is designed to rehash a lot of the techniques that we learned in part one. So if you haven't watched it yet, I would strongly advise that you do that first. So welcome to part two of drawing a floor plan from a sketch. If you've not watched part one, please go and check it out. It's in the link in the description below. Um, but let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? So we left you on the edit this plan screen where we finished saving our plan. So let's just select to edit this plan. And here we are. We've got the plan that we created before. So if we're going to create a new floor, if you look along the bottom, you'll see that there is a floor up and down red arrow. If we tap the upwards arrow, it will ask if you'd like to create a new floor. Let's just select OK. Now you'll see that you've got a blueprint, or in this case, a green print of the floor below. This will help give you a framework to build your first floor. So what we will do using Quick Draw, we'll create our first room and we're going to start with the bedroom, uh, this top bedroom over here. So we're just going to tap, hold and drag, and then we're going to type in our measurements the same as we did before. Tapping on the blue measurement box, we'll type in 3.9 for the width and then for the depth, this is going to be 3.1. We'll hit enter and then we're done. Remember to name your room. This is going to be a bedroom. Now, using the wall by wall option, we're going to create the next bedroom, the bedroom below. We'll tap wall by wall and then we'll tap on the adjoining wall and then select on a start point. We'll choose this one and we will type in our measurement 3.6 and hit enter. Then we'll start our next wall. We can use the plus arrow here. Remember, you can tap and drag that to an angle if need be, but this is just right angle. So we'll just add it as it is. 2.4 is the measurement for this one. And we're going to use the auto complete in the bottom right hand corner to finish off the room. Let's name the room. This is another bedroom. And let's center the text whilst we're there. And now we're going to create the third bedroom in this bottom corner. Now let's type quick draw and let's type in the sizes. Let's do a different way of creating the room. Remember, we do width by depth, the same as you would read a graph. So let's type on our keyboard 2.4 and then hit enter and then 2.7 and hit enter. Then when we move our mouse, we can see that the room fits into place. Let's just click that in now. Perfect. Now we can see we've got a little cupboard over on this side. This is one meter by 1.8. So let's do this using wall by wall. Choose the adjoining wall, select a start point, type in one meter and enter. Now remember the wall locking measurements because we've typed the measurement in now, we can make this wall longer or shorter depending on our needs. Now let's move this slightly longer so it's sat perfectly on the line of the wall below. Then we can start our next wall, type in the measurement, which is 1.8 and hit enter. We can now use the autocomplete to finish the room. And now we're left with this L shape for the landing. Now we've got the measurements for this here, but to fill this in quickly, we can just use quick draw. We can choose a start point, either at the extremity in the top left or the bottom right, tap, hold and drag, and we can fill that area. Let go once you're done, and then we can type in our measurements. So we can see this is 0.9 wide. So let's type 0.9 and hit enter. And we can see that this wall in total, it's 0.9 and then 1.2. So in total, that's 2.1. Well, we can see that it's 2.1 there. So actually all of our measurements in this instance line up perfectly, which is great. So let's name the rest of the rooms and add all of the symbols. Let's name the landing just here. Perfect. Let's just drag that into the middle. Now let's add all of our doors. We can add a door into the cupboard, it sits that way. And again, we can add a door into the landing this way, hinge that to the right. Another door that sits just here. Let's flip that around. And then the final door into the bedroom over here. Let's hinge that to the right. Let's name this room. It looks like we've not named it as yet. And let's center the text. Now let's add the windows. We've got a long window in the bedroom. 
So let's tap, hold and drag to add to that window. We've got a window at the front here. Let's tap, hold and drag that to size. And we've got a window in the bottom left as well, just there. Perfect. Now, centering all of our text, let's sort out the room sizes as we did in our previous video. Just make them slightly smaller or slightly larger. And this is again, just to make the plan look nice and pretty on the final image. Now you can size the text or position the text really wherever you want, but you know, it's a good tip to always center the text, make the text a relative size to the room. I harp on with this, but it's because it makes the plan look fantastic. It makes it look that much better, that much more professional. And you want your plan to stand out and look better than your competitors, obviously. So for the sake of a couple of seconds, it's always worth doing. So jumping back in, let's make the landing text a little bit smaller as well. And we can see that we've basically finished the upstairs, but we do need to add the stairs. Now stairs are always best added from the lower floor going upwards. Now stairs can be a little bit fiddly. They're quite a simple premise. We'll go over doing that with you now. So if we go back downstairs, we can see that in our hallway, the stairs go up with the wall on the left hand side. The stair icon is just here. We can see that the stairs in our plan are just straight. So we want the ones on the far left. And we can see that they go from top to bottom and they have the wall on the left hand side. Let's drag those into place. Now don't worry about adjusting the viewable area at the moment. We can do that afterwards. Once we've placed those stairs in, we want to go upstairs. Now you can do that once you tap on the stairs, you've got the go upstairs option, or you can use the floor navigation buttons down here. Let's go upstairs and now let's adjust the stairs so they are the correct length. We want to use the red handles. So let's drag them back so they sit nice and square. Now, to me, that looks absolutely fine. Let's just adjust what is the viewable area upstairs using this red handle here. It sits on the little jagged line in the middle of the stairs. This will allow you to show how many steps you want to show on each floor. Let's go back down and let's just adjust that in ever so slightly. I'm actually going to make these stairs ever so slightly wider so they come in line with this door. So also when we're upstairs, they sit into the landing nice and square. So the last thing that we want to do with our plan is just double check everything. It's always best to double check everything, room by room, floor by floor, before you finalize your plan. So let's now quickly do that. So let's check the plan now. We're gonna check it room by room. The lounge, it's got the window, it's got the hallway, it's got the stairs. Bathroom has all of the correct symbols in it. The kitchen, it's got the sink, the windows and the hob. Dining room looks fine. Okay, let's go upstairs, check everything through. Now this window looks like it could be a little bit bigger. So let's just make that slightly larger. You can also see that I'd like to move the landing text a little bit more central. And to me, I think that looks absolutely fine. So to finish the plan, let's hit finish in the bottom right hand corner. And there you can see your finished plan. So that's it. That's our finished plan. Now all we need to do is we need to save the plan out for our details. And we can go through all of that in the final instalment of our little series on how to create a floor plan from sketch. The link for the next video is in the description below. Make sure that you check it out and I'll see you there.